I just remember that last uh, big show that she did for VH1, the live and more encore yes. in New York City. Mm -hmm. That was the absolute, oh my God, the best. Fabulous. <laughs> it was just... I still have every one of her albums. Yeah. It's at my mom's house. Like, if you don't know what a diamond needle is on a turntable, and <laughs> put a penny on that thing and make sure it stayed sharp. Oh, you are funny. Yeah. I know. That's remember, old school. Um, remember we used to do old school the, girl. Um, remember we used to do the divas, and there was yeah. one where it was Donna and Diana Ross. A lot of people were nervous. Yeah. Let me tell you something. You can they were friends. Everyone. They were friends. It was yeah, no, but yeah. you know, people like to start catty things, but you can yeah. say whatever you want about Miss Donna, but that might be on all the time. That girl, all the time, beautiful vocals. Yeah. And we have an hour, so we should have a time for two rotations. Oh, great. Listen. I enjoyed it into so it. much. It was just sad. Uh, it reminded me very much of um, Nina you know, Simone. Nina Simone. The mm. question that, I had, do you, yeah. I wonder if she really felt, uh, uh, do you think the community properly embraced her? No. no. I'm going to say no. it for you. No. No. I don't think they properly embraced her, and I think the um, Adam and Eve, Adam and Steve things alienated her from the audience that built her. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That interview was awful. And for her to have to make a statement like that for someone who was really so private, um, but still such a brilliant performer, that had to hurt. Like that had to be really brutal for her to lose the, the community that, that built her, that, that helped her. But is it the out. community? Hold on, but let's say it. Is it? Because, you know, there's a community and then there's us within the community. It was the community. Well, it was two different things. Yeah. She's talking about the gay community. She but that's what I mean. Even within the community, I'm talking there's about two the fractions. Us. But I'm right? talking about us. Oh, oh, no, no, I no, mean, but, but I I mean, mean black gay. I, yeah, black that's, what, that's what Katia was saying. I think it hurt the white gay community because either way, we were still down with Donna Summer. I think they it was were looking for a reason. They knew it was a reason. Yeah. We were used to it. Hey. Hey. <laughs> there you go. I That's why I did hey, hey, it. I was <laughs> listening. I was waiting for Brooklyn, but um, hi. I'm I grew up friend. in the church, so I'm used to, you know, I'm used to that. So my, uh, my, preacher, she comes, hi, my preacher would say, God made Adam, Eve, not Adam and Stephen. I'd be singing in the choir, and the preacher would say that. You know, it was a very. Um, Roger, is she comfortable with discussing that about her mom? Yeah. Hi guys, I'm here. Of course I am. It's in the Brooklyn. film. She's right here. She's <laughs> here. <laughs> well, oh, we no, can't no. see you yet, Brooklyn. Sorry, you all. Sorry, you all. I, I had a hard time finding the link for this. I apologize. They were. No, deep. we just wanted to make sure that you're comfortable. They were deep we're... in Adam and Eve, Adam and Steve when I joined. So I, I was. Listening. I and didn't know. Also... I didn't know that she was the one that made that quote. I heard it my oh, whole yeah. life. It was the first she, 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 she was, was in the original there, Little Richard, I think. Little was. Richard, yeah, that was then the Little Richard yeah. documentary. Yeah. But Little Richard struggled. I mean, you know, like so did Whitney Houston. So did I mean? There's so many. So um, many. Yeah, so I'm still oh, struggling because we know the power <laughs> and pull of the black church. My father is a minister. I struggled with that. You know, being from the black church, singing in the choir, growing up in that environment, and then you know being on the DL and then, you know, struggling with like, like that coming out. And I had a lot of self-hatred, you know, and I probably would be saying that back when I was, you know, young. Um, so I understand that. And I understand that it's such a- And it's a different way that, that mainstream media might manipulate something. Yep. Whereas perhaps in our community, we just would have been like, girl, you know, and, and it would have kept moving. <laughs> What is yeah. the next album coming no, out? It wouldn't have been no, it wouldn't have been no thing. Yeah. What is the next right. song coming well, out? And I think to exactly. be but but also to be clear, I think on stage she wasn't on a rant. She was being off the cuff and trying to be, you know, it didn't land and it wasn't appropriate, but her intent wasn't to be condemning, you know, she was just right. being, you know, whatever. And, but it, but the times were changing and I think people were feeling very differently and she got caught in that. And, and I think, you know, understanding at this, you know, what the hurt that it caused was really devastating to her. And yeah. when she realized, oh, wait, no, like I shouldn't, I shouldn't be saying that, you know? I felt Absolutely. that. Yeah. I did feel that. We were also was, in a health crisis. I mean, people know. were dying, yeah. so people that, definitely were sensitive. Well, I, I, will say, I will say that this actually 
happened before it really kicked off. It wasn't that exactly. because she had a lot of friends yeah. dying at the time. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. so it, this comment actually happened before and then it just traveled, you know, yeah. and it got a lot of things added to it and things put onto it. And to, to her, you know, unfortunately my father and her did not correct the record soon enough. And I yeah. think it took a life of its own. And I think that was one of her biggest regrets that she didn't handle that that part of it better because it wasn't reflective of her life or how she actually felt. I well, she probably life. just thought it would just disappear. I mean, it was yeah. just, a, like I'm, you said, an off the cuff comment. Yeah, I remember- That, my, that, that a truth be told, everybody had heard, so. Yeah, my I remember my friend coming to me and saying, Donna's homophobic now. And I remember being like, you know, devastated. And I was like, you know, not that I didn't hear it every day in my own, community and home and church. But it, I was like really devastated, um, but I didn't make me want to not listen to her music. I was like, you know, you know, that's the, you know. Is it the feeling of another person like in the, in the mainstream kind of betraying your community? Is Was that the feeling you had? Yeah, you know, when this happened, I don't know if I was that immersed in the white, gay, I, you know, it's, it, it's, it's just, it's very, you know, segregated. The white and gays. Was, <laughs> yeah, gay people are segregated. I mean, if back then it was really segregated. There were black gay bars and straight. Thank you. That's what I mean. Like it's, there is a separation within the community well, because at the end of the day is you can't, you always going to be black. But, and like you, you saw who was protesting. Gay, but you can't hide being black. There's no cost. It's still, it's still separate. Let's not say yeah. that was back in the yeah. day. It's still very it's still separate. separate. Look it's at still Atlanta. Separate. It's very separate. Yeah. yeah. You know, well, and you know what? This is actually, we haven't even started the round table officially, <laughs> so I guess we should. Uh, but this is absolutely like... fantastic. Malik, I want you to keep all of this in the final edit. 